Good morning, Co-Chair. I also come here as a representative of the Asia-Pacific Regional CSO Engagement Mechanism. In the Philippines, like many other countries, statistics mask poverty and inequalities between rich and poor, men and women. A few magical waves of statistical ones support government's claim that poverty has been greatly reduced and globalization has been good for all. But walk with me through the slums of Manila, and I'll show you that poverty, no matter how it's measured, is deeply felt by millions. Come to our rural communities and see how resource grabs, the privatization of water, energy, education, and health are greater indicators of misery. Statistics are political acts. They matter for those we choose to count. They matter even more for those who we don't count. The use of World Bank's poverty measurement and failure to measure concentration of wealth are two political statistical choices designed to continue the malevolent fiction that neoliberalism is good. Anywhere in the world, $1.25 per person per day is starvation rate. It's acceptable for 35 pe people in the global south to live on the daily equivalent of the minimum wage for one person in a wealthy country with no benefits or public services. That's a morally reprehensible assertion that values the lives of vast majority of the world less than those in the developed world. Changing the base year for the statistic is another manipulation to make the poor disappear. Statistics we select should measure transformation, and it's not hard. We can measure growing wealth inequalities between countries and people, the world's wealth in offshore bank accounts, whether a country provides living wages, the ratio between labor share and profits. We could even measure the time it takes the world's richest person to gain what a Bangladeshi garment worker will earn in a year, which is one second, by the way. We can measure policies, not just outcomes. Let's measure military spending versus public health spending. Taxes paid by corporations and by the wealthy. Interest in loans paid by developing countries. How many trade agreements are subject to human rights and gender audits? These would be statistics faithful to the SDGs. We should not restrict the number of indicators nor the political intention of the indicators. Civil society and proportional representation from the G77 countries in the expert group is crucial. For instance, the proposed indicator for redistributing unpaid care work is the distance to fetch water. Of course, it's important to measure women's access to publicly available water through Goal 6, but here we need to measure public investment in care services. Surely that was the intention, right? Civil society can play a powerful role in monitoring the SDGs, including through institutionalized participation at all levels, connecting local realities to global policy debates, and in building new paradigms for social transformation and development justice. Thank you very much.